We can decarbonize Alberta and nuclear power can be the baseline for at least the next millennia. It might appear that what does uh, business school have to do with science fair or what, right? Uh, but the fact is, sort of deep down, we've been always working with scientists. So my project's Decarbonize Alberta, and it was on reducing Alberta's carbons emission, carbon emissions because on this chart right here, which is content of electricity versus price, you can see we have pretty dirt. Uh, it's pretty dirty and cheap electricity, so I figured we needed a better way of that. And I chose nuclear um, kind of before I even started the project, um, mostly because it's uh, it's very energy dense and it does and it has a great safety record. Um, so for the fuel, most of the conventional reactors use uranium-235, which is 0.7% of all natural uranium. But I decided to use thorium, and it can be used more efficiently in reactors. So you can, thorium can't be fissioned directly, so it needs to be bred. You fire a neutron at thorium-232, becomes thorium-233, which in 22 seconds becomes protactinium-233, which in 27 days becomes uranium-233, which can be fissioned directly creating two more neutrons to continue the chain reaction. And for spent fuel, most people think spent fuel is a problem, but it's actually really useful. For example, most of the spent fuels can be used in medical diagnostics, and um, iodine-131 can be used in treating thyroid cancer. So they have a lot of use for them. Also, because I'm using thorium, you can use them more efficiently, and you can reuse spent fuel because our modern day reactors are only 3% efficient, but the main problem is we have such old reactors. So for radiation, most people think there's a real difference between man-made radiation and just natural radiation, but there actually isn't. There is three types of radiation, alpha, which can't penetrate through a piece of paper, beta, which can't penetrate through aluminum, and gamma, which basically penetrates through everything, including lead, although lead does slow it. So. Alpha is the most dangerous and gamma is the least dangerous, but even the smallest amount of radiation needs to be respected. And by the standards they judge current nuclear reactors, they should evacuate areas like Denver and bananas shouldn't be legal. So <laughs> <laughs> the elephant in the room when talking about nuclear is the nuclear reactants like Chernobyl, Three Mile Island, and Fukushima. Although these were all different designs and locations, they all have a few things in common. They were all caused by human error, and they were all high-pressure reactors. As well, they were all very old designs. Chernobyl was caused by misinterpreting instructions. Three Mile Island was caused by confusion over the position of a human-operated relief switch. And Fukushima was caused by being overcautious with the tsunami. And on the desk per terawatt hour of electricity, you can see even though all these accidents, nuclear is still the safest, and ironically, it's safer than wind and solar. So the solution, I believe the solution is nuclear because of its energy density and safety record, but I don't believe in the reactors currently in use because they're inefficient, they take a long time, and they're very expensive to build. So I chose Lifter, the liquid fluoride thorium reactor, because it's at atmospheric pressure, so in the event of a meltdown, you don't have gas buildups, uh, which cause Three Mile Island and other things. Well, they basically all cause the accidents is because of lack of coolant. And um, as well, it uses molten salt, and that's why it's able to be at atmospheric pressure, because it has a boiling point of 1,300 degrees Celsius, and the reactor won't ever get that hot, even in a meltdown. And it's walk away safe. Well, walk away. You still probably don't want to walk away on an active reactor. Um, so you have a freeze plug at the bottom, which is made of salt, not of ice, because of how high the temperatures get. And so in the event of a meltdown, it will get too hot to cool this block right here. And so all of the coolant and the fuel will put, be put into a dump tank where they can be safely managed. As well, there's different designs that are meant to be easier and more efficient, but I like that version of Lifter because you can e it's modular. You can make them either very large or massive. They range from about the size of a pickup truck to a skyscraper. So, and then I have the economy, and because nuclear is baseload power, 
Um, it doesn't work too well in areas with a lot of solar. So you can see this is a California duck chart. It has a bit of a belly right here because of the um, because of how much solar, and that's a prediction of how much solar they have right now. This blue line is the actual. And so nuclear could only run at the bottom of the belly, and it's not very useful. But because Alberta doesn't have much solar, we have the Alberta whale chart. And um, so it can run at the bottom of the tail, which is a lot more power. And so there's not too much left over for natural gas or renewables. And the typical Pennsylvania, Jersey, Maryland generation stack, you can see nuclear turns on at about $50.88 per megawatt hour, which is bulk. We pay about double that. Um, so, and nuclear is, can run at about $20 per megawatt hour. So, the, and on the EROI, it's, uh, it, well, it's energy returned on invested. So it returns 75 times the amount of energy invested into actually getting fuel and all that. And the economical threshold is 7.5 times. So the, eco the economics of running a nuclear power plant in Alberta won't be a problem. And the oil sands, because we provide 10% of Canada's energy and so much jobs and money, we need to keep them running. But at the same time, we, they also are a lot of our emissions. And if they plan on getting worse. So I was thinking we could use nuclear to do that. And so on the energy to produce one barrel of oil sands oil, you can see thorium, it takes about six grams to produce a barrel of oil sands oil, 159 liters about. And it takes 12,000 grams of coal instead. So there's a very large difference. And even if you exaggerate these numbers, for example, we were, uh, extracting 60 million barrels of oil a day, you can still hardly see how much, how many kilograms of thorium we would need compared to coal. And so my conclusion of the project is, the re is that um, fission is safer than burning. We can decarbonize Alberta and nuclear power can be the baseline for at least the next millennia. Thank you. interesting project and I don't know about anyone else but I want to know um, when I come around later to talk to you why we need to evacuate Denver and why <laughs> <laughs> I'll be asking <laughs>